folks are back. This is Steve Sanson, Stephen Jonas, from another episode of Veterans in Politics. Today we're going to have a special show. Is Kena Adams? She's the um, coordinator for the Las Vegas Indian Voice, and she's going to tell us about the uh, tribal community and what's going up on in the reservation here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Steve, do you have anything? Um, actually, I do. I have a lot, but because mm. of our because of our guests, I'm going to keep it kind of uh, maybe I do a special show. Which is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could go on with everything going on right now. However, because of our guests, I want to keep it uh, uh, topical. So, I uh, in 2013, I was one of the people from Vegas chose to go open up a casino in Northern California, Great Resort and Casino. So the tribe that ran it was the Federated Indian, uh, sorry, the Federated Indians of Great and Rancheria. They had never ran a casino before, so their chairman, Greg Saris, decided he was like, let he wanted them to reach out to a Las Vegas company to come in and help manage, which is very common tribal casinos in California. So the company I was previously with was the company they did it. So we we're under a management contract. But so what I wanted to bring up is, as an outsider going into that. I heard people that weren't familiar with the casino industry had a lot to say about gaming. And their thing was that it increases crime, that it brings in all sorts of trouble and stuff. So what, and then they were upset that this tribe had trust land. So when all this legislation was first passed, they were okay with it being on reservation land because it was, especially rancherias in California are usually out away, away from the highways and secluded areas. So everyone was fine with it, but then all of a sudden you start getting trust land there near highways and they're close to San Francisco. And all these people had a problem. I'm not gonna say the name of the group that was the biggest one speaking out against it, but it's very hypocritical because when it was reservation land, they were like, okay, we're fine. But as soon as it got close to them, then they're like, we don't want casinos. Kina, that was, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Steve, that was your rant or that was a question for our guests? We have well, no, it's a, it's a rant, the hypocrisy uh -huh. that it's like, oh, so it's okay these tribal casinos going out in secluded areas, but as soon as you get to a, a big city like San Francisco or you're close to the highway mm -hmm. and there's a lot of traffic, now all of a sudden it's like, oh, casinos are bad, keep them away from us. Uh -huh. Right, with our newspaper, we've always talked about that. Um, our, our editor being Seminole and uh, African American, We've always tried to bring our tribal and, and uh, other folks, as we want to say, together to teach them about um, Native American traditions and ways. Because uh, from the outside looking in, you may have a, a stereotypical idea of what a Native American is, or but these injustices have been going on a long time where like you said it was okay when it wasn't on the reservation and now it's not okay we went through that when the when the reed gardner plant was in moapa you know it, it was okay until everybody got sick you know and now we want to try to do something about it but uh not much was done about it and a lot of people died in moapa because of the reed gardner um power plant from the ash we, we don't usually have our guests um tune into our rants but yeah your bio, Kena. <laughs> What's your bio? Oh, my name is Kena Adams. I'm the Las Vegas coordinator for Indian Voices newspaper. Uh, we are in California as well. We work with the Kumaya Nation okay. a lot. They, they support our paper quite a bit in San, mm -hmm. in San Diego area. Okay. Um, we work with the Moapa Paiute tribe out here, the Las Vegas Paiute tribe. And how we got our start was... Um, we were with the Shoshones when they were, um, they're, they're, our Shoshone brother by the name of Corbin Harney was a Western Shoshone uh, leader out here, spiritual leader. And um, that's how Indian Voices got its start out here in Las Vegas. This is where we were born, is Las Vegas, Nevada. And with Corbin Harney, our Western Shoshone activist, um, he started the Sean DeHai Network and um, we just kind of, took our activism spirit within the paper and we here we are 34 years later. What tribe do you belong to? Kina? Well, I'm, I'm what you call intertribal. So I have cousins that are that I'm married in as well as about four generations back. We came from the Apache side, but when it was considered Mexico, not the United States, mm -hmm. on the San Joaquin River there on the and so that's where I we don't have the roles because all of our history has been destroyed. Yeah. We have very few roles and very few ways to track our people to see who is who. 
and, and it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's been something that's happened in history to many races, not just the Native Americans where they destroyed their history, burned it or just totally lost it somewhere in space. Right. So when did the newspaper get started? So we're 35 years old. Okay. And um, we got started here in Las Vegas with, with um, Corbin Harney. It was about around eight, 89 when we started uh, helping him protest uh, Yucca Mountain, the, the, the above ground bombing. We were, we were uh, that's how we got our teeth in the grind, right. was with him. And then from there on, we've done nothing but try to bring um, uh, how would you say it? we would we just want to bring our paper and give voices to people that generally didn't have a voice like on our reservations like in rural areas besides our reservations small towns where people don't have a voice who who can't speak up for themselves we we and then we like to bring um like i said there's such a big connection between the african-american and the native american community how so well when when uh, Abraham Lincoln decided to abolish slavery, uh, our our black Americans, even though slavery was abolished, they, they really didn't have anywhere to go. They were still treated the same way as they were when they were considered a slave, okay? And so a lot of our black Americans went to the reservations and made lives and lived with our Indian people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that is a history that we- Were they welcome there? Some were welcome, obviously, but with what was going on in the native community, they were in the same boat as our native people. They were uprooted from their whole life and their whole land and everything that they know. So there were so many common factors there that it, 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 it gave us a new native culture with our black people and our native people. I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the Freeman tribe. They're fighting for their rights right now. Those are considered black Indians. So, I mean, we have black Indians, we have uh, Navajo, Paiute, we have Indians everywhere. They just are all different names, but they're, they come in all different shades, just like you could say our black people do or our Hispanic people. We have Puerto Ricans or we have people from Mexico. They're all, they all, but they. You got Puerto Rican Indians? No, well, we do have people from Puerto Rico are considered native people, and they yeah, and yeah. they I mean, share a I lot mean, of do you, common, do, do, you know, do you have do you have Puerto Ricans living on the um, Indian reservation? Well, I, I don't know. I know we have a Hispanic population. I know we have obviously have African Americans, uh, Hispanics, and Native Americans click very well. Uh, we have a lot of people that are half Hispanic and half Native American. And then a lot of Hispanic people are Aztecs, one of our strongest mm -hmm. tribes that we ever had in, you know, in the history of tribes. I mean, they, they were Isn't extraordinary. Isn't that how the Mexican population started with the Aztecs and the Spaniards? Yes, the the, that is. as well, yeah. yeah the, the what, Steve? The Mayans. Mayans. Yep, yeah, that I, is I, where our, our, yeah, that is true. A good friend true. of mine has an Aztec Created. lineage, and he, he's brought that up to me quite a Whatever yeah, it's times. created a whole nother race of people. So, so how many how many different um, Indian tribes here in Clark County? Clark County, we and could you name them all? <laughs> well, there's only one, or two, there's only one that, that that or two that's in Clark County. We have we have the Las Vegas Paiute tribe, which owns the New Woo, which is on Las Vegas Boulevard. That's our only inner city reservation that I've ever seen, <laughs> okay? But yeah. that's an interesting story. Maybe one day and we'll talk got, about it. You got another uh, reservation And then we have the Moapo Reservation, which Centennial is going Hills. towards Salt Lake City. Okay. And then you have the Snow Mountain Reservation that is going towards uh, also north. That's also north. Going to, If you go towards um, tra Mount Charleston, it's off, uh, off there. So those are all our, we have, there are really only two tribes here in Clark County, the Moapa Paiutes and the Las Vegas Paiutes. Now if you go towards the, the state line in California, that's where we got our start, start with the Western Shoshones. Uh -huh. Okay, and then you go up north, we have a lot of tribes up north, a lot more tribes up north than we do here in the south. You have the Reno Sparks, you have a, a Pyramid Lake Paiutes, you have, you have the Lovelock Paiutes. You have so many tribes up north compared to here in Southern Nevada. Okay. And that's another reason a paper so important here. Mm -hmm. We need to bring this, uh, bring this to people. And it's not just about natives, it's just about talking about injustices to people, no matter their color. So let's get that, I wanna get that straight right now. That's not just about Native Americans, our newspaper. I think that's what keeps us 
not in the limelight as they think we're just about Native Americans, but all we're about equality. We're about right. unity with all races in the United States mm -hmm. to where we can all come together and do something for our earth, for our people to heal what's been done. Our people are hurting right now. All people, not just natives, are hurting with the with the pandemic and the reservations have already taken such hits. They're, they they can't afford this pandemic. The Navajo Nation is just, they're, they're losing people left and right out in, in Arizona. How are they educating their, their children on the reservation? How's that working? Oh, they, they, they with what elders we have left, we, they try to educate them in traditional ways. How so? You know, uh, the traditional ways of their language, their, the ways of their life, the, the, the traditional foods, but it's very hard right now. They're being, they're in rural areas. Um, like he said, it, it's one day it's good, one day you're you're not good. I mean, it's 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 very hard right now with the pandemic and the rural, the rural settings. Um, it, it's caused a lot of difficulty, but but we're just hoping for things to get better. The Indian Voice is it online or how do you? We are Indian Voices. Um, we have a Facebook page at Indian Voices. We are a hard print paper. We have been a hard print paper. And where for, do you distribute? We distribute in Las Vegas. We have we distribute in Hawaii. We have a writer in Hawaii. We I mean, distribute in Arizona, how? California. Seven Eleven. How do you? Oh, uh, oh, we just uh, mainly at uh, most of our distribution is at the reservations. We take a lot of our papers to different reservations, especially in California, mm -hmm. and in Las. Vegas I like to put it put the papers in like the the, the community libraries um, not really 7-elevens but um, you know different community centers the Las Vegas Indian Center you can go out to Snow Mountain they have the um, golf course out there put them out there you know I just like to put them uh, well anywhere I can I mean we're a grassroots so it's, it's a free yeah, paper right yeah it's a it's a hard print paper but we're also online through our Facebook page how do you make your money through our advertising, but money is, uh, we, we always, we, ha we, we haven't made much money. That's what why we want to move to the- What type of advertisement? Well, we do the, you know, for the hard print, we do advertising there, and then we also- Like what type, what type? You know, uh, just- who who would who who advertises in the paper? What what type of companies or? Well, we have uh, quite a few Native American companies, crafters that advertise, tax businesses. Um, mm -hmm. Like right now, uh, uh, the World Beat Center in um, San Diego is doing a lot with us, so they have a big page in our paper, and they're talking about um, food for health. You know, make your food your medicine to heal ourselves. So um, we we get most of our. We're just a community paper, and we, we haven't really been a for a profit paper, and we finally have our nonprofit status after 34 years because wow. because of that fact. We said we just need to go ahead and become a nonprofit because it's a community newspaper. Right. It's all of us in the community that's been working to keep this paper alive for the last 30 years. We don't right. get paid to do this. We do it for the betterment of our community and our people. Right. So um, we will, we want to move into the 21st century, though. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Indian Voices is ready. We're ready to be a mainstream uh, newspaper here. Uh, in how many? How many um, distribution? How many? What's your printing numbers? Well, right now we print about 8,000, and most of the about 6,000. Well, about probably about 4,000 go to stay in California, Southern California. Okay. Then we have people that deliver up to San Francisco and you know our reservations up that way. Uh, we have some writers in Hawaii, so we send publications out to Hawaii now, which are we also consider indigenous people. Right. You know, they're, they're indigenous to Hawaii. And uh, we have Oregon and just different states where our supporters are. We send our papers and they and they and they put them out into the rural areas and reservations that allow them to, and maybe even a Seven Eleven, like you said. <laughs> Who prints the papers? Uh, Black Rose Communications. She's our um, editor, Rose. She's Seminole and African American, uh -huh. and this has been her baby now for the last thirty-five years. Okay. So we print out of San Diego, Rose Davis, and um, we just bring the papers here each month and distribute them. We are a monthly publication, but we are ready to do the internet. We are ready to do the digital thing. So we're very excited to be here today. To be honest, this is probably the second time we've got some you know, notoriety, and we've been here so long and done so many great things in this community. Right. 
Uh, since, since COVID um, has taken place March of last year, how, how do you guys do your powwows? Are you still doing the powwows? No, there hasn't been very much social. Social and, and Native people need to be social. This is just part of their their being. Right. They love their dances and they're and they're and they're very spiritual and love the, love Creator and the religion. So it's. It's taken a toll, not just the COVID, but not being able to be social, just like I'm sure it's taken on our urban residents, having to be stuck in it. It's really hasn't been fun for our native people. And we're losing a lot of elders. In fact, in other nations, not here in Nevada, because we only have two, obviously, like I told you, the Las Vegas pipes and the Moapa pipes, Snow Mountain. We've lost elders that were the only ones fluent in, in language. To COVID? Yes, to COVID. Oh wow! So it's been it's been scary, and and we, I just hope there's I just hope you guys have your own medical facility there on the, on the well that's well if I'm allowed to say this it's a joke IHS is a joke sorry to tell you my United States government I love you very much but you need to fix IHS and what does that stand for that stands for Indian Health Services every Native American that is a CIB holder is allowed to get free medical services through IHS now we have a hospital on Parker you can go to the Las Vegas Paiute Clinic which is on the reservation on Main Street Mm -hmm. If you are a CIB holder, which means you are an enrolled member of a tribe. Well, just recently I had a reader come to me and he was turned away because of COVID by three different facilities, including UMC. For, and he had an infection and a pus ball on his leg and they would not help him anywhere because of COVID. And, and <laughs> it, look, we need to revamp IHS. We need to do something for our native people. They they need better medical services. Now, I've, we've tried to push Medicaid, but a lot of people don't want to go on Medicaid. And then, of course, if they get per capita, if you get more than $500 a month, you are ineligible for Medicaid. So it's just IHS needs help. Right. <laughs> need I, I, I was asking about the education of the kids, and you were talking about well, the they, elders and, and their past. And then, then you mentioned that, um, that there's a lot of rural and, and I know that the education system right now is all virtual, and which requires a Wi-Fi. How, how, how does the Indian, um, the young Indian population, how, how do they educate themselves on the virtual? Well, I would say a lot of them are suffering. And, and just like other kids that are not on the reservation, there's just a lot of kids that don't even have access to the internet, don't have a computer to, to do it. Now, my kids, my grandkids were lucky because the Clark County School District offered all those items to us, even gave us some internet. But we're in an urban setting, so we can just imagine what's going on in the rural setting. Mm -hmm. Right now, you can't even get on the Moapa Reservation unless you live there because it's shut down because of COVID. So if you don't live there and you don't have any pertinent business there, you will not enter that reservation. Now, they are in a really bad location for Wi-Fi because when I, I, when I used to go to the reservation, you could barely even get a signal out there. How, how do you know when you reach the reservation? I guess if you don't know where the reservation is, you'd follow signs. <laughs> and if you don't... Do they have it, guards there telling you you can't come on or you can't well, come they, on? How does that work? Well, what, what, it's doing, what they're doing now is you just have it set up when you're coming into the reservation because you have to... You come off the highway and you turn left to go into the reservation right down a smaller road. So they're set up there, the tribal police, let, you know, making sure, checking people's IDs to make sure they live on the reservation and they're allowed to be on the reservation. Do you have to be a Native American be a tribal? police no you don't have to be a Native American to be a tribal police no and who runs the tribal police the tribe the each, tribe each individual tribe the runs tribal their council. own police department tribal council yeah the council the tribal council they run they run their they run their police and everything <laughs> yeah not not every tribe has their own police either so like the one that I worked for they didn't have their own police so they uh, they did a contract with the county so the Sonoma County Sheriff's had permission to come on the come on uh, property and stuff. But, and it, it did cause issues though, because the local, the town nearby, Ronart Park, their police department wanted to come in, but they said, no, it's like, we have a contract with the county. We don't mind the county coming in, but we don't want city police in. Right. So that caused kind of a, kind of, you know, issue between the council and uh, the local city government, but. So. How do you, you guys are still doing the, um, the Paiute, that um, spiritual walk 
so, um, do you guys still do that or? Well, we the last one. And, I, and, and is that is that real? Is that is that a myth or is that? No, something no, that's, that's the spiritual real? walk. I think it was about two years ago they did it, and they walked all through, through uh, Moapa. You know, all through the spiritual walk, as you could would do say. Do you face your demons when you smoke the the pipe? Well, know. that 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 <laughs> is that is for the medicine man to say, and I can also bring you a medicine man here. We have a we have one medicine I would like man to be left. One of those medicine we man. have one medicine man left one in left. Southern Nevada <laughs> one. that is from Northern Nevada because we've lost so many, and and we have one left, and he's almost in his 80s, and I, I would love to bring him to meet you, and he would and he could come and tell you about those things. I'm not I don't have permission to talk about so, those so, kind of so things. So can we get a younger medicine man to take his place or no? Well, that's the problem as well in Indian country when you know, with, with like the, the powwow circle, they're taught the songs, they're taught their heritage and their culture but if you're not involved in the powwow, you might not get that, that you know, get that you know, get that stuff from your elders. Mm -hmm. So that's a big problem in Indian country is we don't have, we're, a lot of our younger people are not being groomed to take on these responsibilities. And so we, we have like uh, Leroy Spotted Eagle was the Southern Paiute um, medicine man. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when he passed his, his I think his son t took it on. But of course, with his generation, they do things different than the way Leroy did it. And it's a, it's a thing to try to get adjusted to these new ways of life, you know, in the way that that he deems to uh, be the medicine person. But um, yeah, that's a problem in Indian country. We don't have anybody taking over the medicine. Very so big problem. I have a question. If somebody does a crime, let's say in Las Vegas, and they, they go onto the Indian reservation, could the police come and get them? Well, um, they'll work with the tribal police. The, the tribal, if they're non-native, the tribal police are not going to protect someone on the reservation. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're not going to protect a non-native on that reservation that did a crime in Vegas and is trying to hide on that reservation. So they'll work with Metro. Yeah. They are in collaboration with Metro. A lot of these guys... Let's say you were a Native American and, and you did a crime in Vegas and you go back to the reservation. Are you, are you safe there or... Well, you, you have rights. I mean, it's a sovereign nation as soon as you hit the reservation land. It's a sovereign nation. It's all like its own little United States. It had, they have their own rights, their own laws, their own rules. Gotcha. Now, they, they have a tribal judge that will deal with that. They will deal with it, granted. But you'd be better off being a Native American going to the reservation and doing a crime in Vegas than trying to be somebody else go there because you won't get in. <laughs> You will not get in there. <laughs> what, what, what does what I I've I was told throughout the years that the U.S. government would provide um, certain benefits for um, Native Americans if their their DNA is like in the nineties is like schooling and. And, and certain property rights. Well, is, yes. is that is that a true statement? Well, yes, you get uh, quite a bit of help with education if you're if you're an enrolled member. Okay. You you can almost get your entire schooling paid for, okay. and there is uh, they have the voc rehab program which helps um, veterans, ex felons, and other people maybe people that just fell on hard times. They retrain them, so they have that program. And what what makes it so special here in Las Vegas is they not only have a reservation office for the voc rehab program. But they have a city office that, that helps all our urban natives. So if we have natives coming from Arizona or even all the way as far as Minnesota, then, they're, then they can get assistance out here with rent, with uh, retraining, with resources. And it's called the Moapa Band of Pipes. Do they get land rehab. as well? Do they have? Do they get? They get land wherever, whatever tribe they're from. They have okay. land where they're from. But no, they don't get land from other natives. No, you can't be like. No, and from the federal government, do do they get? Do they provided land? Mm, no, no, I wouldn't say they just provide them land. Now we've had fights with the city and government officials where mm. they've gotten some land back that was taken from them, right. especially for with Moapa, for instance. But um, then no, they don't just give them land. Now they might give them tax breaks. They might give them a, a loan that you might not have to pay back to start your business, and that's where Voc Rehab comes in. But no, just handing them land. No, they they wouldn't do that. They don't even wouldn't even hand us any land. Okay. Not unless we have a nice big chunk of change for them. <laughs> <laughs> so so the 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 casinos. How many casinos are on the reservation? Well, they, they don't, they have one casino. I don't know if you're if an you're avid firework user, but you know every year in Moapa they have the fireworks down there at the Travel Plaza going towards Salt Lake City. Okay. That's the only casino that Moapa has. Towards Salt Lake? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so it's in Utah. 
No, it's still in, it's not, it's not to the Utah yet. Uh, it's, Around Mesquite area? It's before Mesquite. Moab oh, okay. is right before Mesquite. And then, uh, so, yeah, it's right before Mesquite. But that's the only casino that they have that brings in revenue for their tribe. Now, Moapa was working a lot with solar, but it, but since COVID and and the, with the presidency and all the that's those things going on, the solar is kind of taking a back road. So we're hoping that the solar can come back to life because the, the people in Moapa are depending on that to help further their tribe, and that's kind of been on the brush under the rug with the COVID. The solar projects were like the thing everybody was talking about now it's kind of hush hush because we don't know what's going on with the solar projects okay. so uh, the Paiute um, golf club that's going towards um, uh, Mount Charleston area there that's past, the snow mountain is that, reservation. Uh, that's the snow mountain reservation yes and they are also Paiutes but they're snow mountain okay. or Las Vegas Paiutes and what, what's the difference between the two there's no difference it, it was the government that divided us just like they <laughs> do a lot of things <laughs> there was no difference they're both Paiutes they're both cousins they all come from the same tribe but when they were given the land on Maine mm -hmm. they had a choice the Paiutes to either stay on Maine or they were also given the opportunity to go to Moapa out in the more rural area well a lot of native people I'm sure in 1800 would have rather been out in the rural area but some braved it and stayed in on Maine mm -hmm. and because of their their bravery they still have this reservation today mm -hmm. but um you know they they uh they had to leave uh, right. uh they had to leave and some went to Moapa and some stayed and so that's the only difference right. but they you know they're they're all cousins they're all related but they're they're different tribes so so people have an idea how big that one in las vegas about square mileage do you think that reservation is yeah. probably only about two miles or some acres maybe right. <laughs> maybe less than an, yeah. less than a mile i mean it's not very big but right. it's theirs you know yeah and they and like I said, the story's phenomenal that they stayed there through all the adversity and still have their land after all these years. Steve, you have anything? Uh, just I'm trying not to beat a de uh, beat up the gambling thing. It's just that's my perspective. So it's like that's that's what I understand. That's how I could relate. Um, do you agree or like? I know not everyone thinks that gambling uh, is good for tribes because of the amount of money it brings in. Like I said, some do think that it creates crime. I believe it just brings it in, but that still brings it in. So do you favor gambling and the money that's generated? Because I could tell you that uh, the tribe I worked for, not much money. Um, there was actually, and the reason why they're federated is because there's actually three tribes and I can't pronounce the other two, so I'm not gonna butcher it, sorry. But so, but they're making so much money. Their per cap is like, more money than they ever imagined they can make in their life. Do you think that that, that is the way to go? That more say, tribes get into the gambling so they bring I, in that I, revenue? I would say so. If it will benefit the tribe and help us improve IHS and help us improve the education aspect of our young people so we can start teaching them a culture. And I would say if it benefits the tribe, do it. But a lot of the elders feel that way. They don't want this on the reservation. They, they, they're still, we still want to be the old way, but as much as it hurts and pains us, we have to move on. We have to move into the 21st century. And that's what we're hoping our younger people can do. And uh, that's what we hope for. But I would say that if the tribe can manage it well, I say go for it. Because Moapa does it. The new Wu has the biggest dispensary in the state. The only dispensary where you can go in and actually uh, indulge in cannabis. New Wu has made... Uh, history here when that's it comes to cannabis right? and that's on the reservation on Main Street is the price and they've cheaper? made history <laughs> oh I don't know I, I haven't been in there maybe I should do a story about it <laughs> yeah you should have them do an ad in your paper right did you hear that new woo no <laughs> we need an ad <laughs> that would be nice yes so Kenya, do you have anything else that we haven't touched on no, I just want to emphasize uh, how important the paper is that uh, we want to share the native traditions and values by building bridges through this gra grassroots journalist endeavor, you know. Uh, we're grassroots, we're multicultural, and we just want to uh, bring light to things that uh, have been very uncomfortable. And we've been talking about these things that have been very uncomfortable for 34 years that are just now coming into light. People are finally starting to talk about. So we just want to be part of that conversation because we are an intricate part of the Las Vegas history here. Okay. 
Well, Keena Adams, I want to thank you so much for coming to the program. Thank you. Could you look in the camera and, and maybe get some advertisers or um, tell people a little I'm bit more <laughs> about it, a little closing statement and uh, a point of contact if you want to give that as well. Okay. Uh, we are a multicultural newspaper that's been in Las Vegas and Southern, Southern California for many years. Uh, we don't just write about Native American things. We write about... Uh, all kinds of things that uh, have to do with injustices in our community, no matter your race. Um, we are Las, I'm a Las Vegas native. This, this, this newspaper is a Las Vegas native. And we could just really use your support to move into the 21st century. Uh, you can reach me at Indian Voices Newspaper at gmail.com, or you could also give me a call or the owner, Black Rose Communications, a call, and her phone number is 619 534 2435. And my telephone number is 702 624 9502. Uh, we, we have our current issue up on Facebook, and you can always go uh, at Indian Voices and find our Facebook and look at our most current issue. Uh, we look forward to still serving this community and, and moving into the 21st century and we thank you so much Steve for having us here and bringing light to our paper because we 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 are so important in this community. Yes, absolutely. Folks, that's Kena Adams, the Las Vegas coordinator for the Indian Voice newspaper. Give her a call, put an ad in, and, and learn a little bit more about our Native American brothers and sisters. That's not too far away from us. This is Steve Sanson and Steve Jonas with Veterans in Politics. Until next time.